Welcome back everyone, Nick and Lex here. Thank you so much for joining me today to this new episode of Music with Nick. Today, I uh, have some sad news. As you can see in the title, we lost a music icon, a um, just larger than life, you know, uh, personality and musician, producer, um, everything you know this man knew how to do it all and uh spanned a career of 70 years and uh, unfortunately yesterday um his life uh came to an end at 91 years of age but we'll always remember him this is a tribute video so there's going to be a lot of talking if you want to skip to the actual reactions i'll leave some timestamps in the video but there is a lot to talk about and i wanted to thank two people, two very important, very good friends um, that requested this. Now, unknowingly, each of them requested a um, Quincy Jones reaction or tribute video, uh, but didn't. they didn't know that basically they're doing, they're requesting the same thing. So I thought, why don't we make a longer video with both of their requests in one, like a little marathon, let's say, right? But sponsored by two people. So I wanted to thank, uh, of course, JK and Scott Anderson. Thank you so much for making this video happen. I'm going to make it as entertaining as I can. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of talking. So if you're not in for that, in the mood of listening, you know, I'll leave the the timestamps for the actual reactions but we will be reacting to some um uh, 80s quincy jones and we're going to be reacting so, to some michael jackson I'll, I'll explain uh also when i do these reactions why they're there and everything and i try to give out some information for the younger audience maybe there's some people that don't really know that much about quincy jones so i wanted to you know fill them in also the, the legend that he was and that he's always going to be remembered for so, uh, first of all, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some uh, things that I pulled up on Wikipedia that are very important. Quincy Jones, I mean, this man was just on a different level. I've always said it. I remember um, uh, when I first heard Michael Jackson when I was about, I don't know, I think uh, seven or eight years old. And I, I never really heard the stuff, the four uh prior records you know the michael jackson i didn't know about jackson five and i didn't know that michael jackson started his musical journey so young but um uh so i i think i started listening to michael jackson um uh i don't know around the i think the i don't really know the time but um i remember he had off the wall and thriller and thriller and everybody loved thriller of course and um and and i asked my dad wow this is such great music and and uh and he the, the, and i remember that he told me it's because he has quincy jones as a producer and i was like who is quincy jones you know but that's the first time i heard that name and then i think the first time i saw him uh was in a movie was i think austin powers 2 and where he where austin powers has like, the opening of the movie and you hear the the music the ba ba da I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Then, then you see Quincy Jones directing, you know, and I was like, that's Quincy Jones. Wow. Um, so th those were my first like kind of like introductions, like, you know, just like hearing the name. But I didn't know that he was such an icon. And I didn't know that he did, you know, we are the world with all these iconic musicians in the mid 80s and all that stuff. But we'll talk about that. Um, I just wanted to explain to you guys the first time that I actually heard his name and and I loved and I, my dad did explain to me like okay so Michael Jackson that's why he has this sound you know um, which I'm going to talk about because it was the influence of Quincy Jones in the music of Michael Jackson that I think brought him to these new heights that that he went and uh, the star he became I think there's a lot of Quincy Jones he, he michael owns a lot of quincy jones and vice versa i think they pushed themselves up um in a very very amazing way even though i mean quincy jones at that time in the 80s was already a legend you know everybody wanted to work with him so let's talk a little bit about quincy jones and uh, because this is a tribute video so it says here quincy the light jones jr 
born in March uh, of 1933, was an American record producer, songwriter, composer, arranger, and film and television producer. His career spanned 70 years with 28 Grammy Awards, one out of 80 nominations. I mean, this man won 28 Grammy Awards. That's amazing. 80 nominations um, and a Grammy Legend Award in 1992. Jones came to prominence in the 1950s as a jazz arranger and conductor before working on pop music and film scores. Um, he moved easily between genres, producing pop hit records for Leslie Gore in the early 1960s, including It's My Party, and serving as an arranger and conductor for, se for several collaborations between the jazz artist Frank Sinatra, Count Basie, in 1968, Jones became the first African-American to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Song for The Eyes of Love from the film Banning. I still have to watch that movie. I, Jones was also nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Score for his work on the 1967 film In Cold Blood, making him the first African-American to be nominated twice in the same year. Jones produced three of the most successful albums by pop star Michael Jackson, Off the Wall. And that's, I remember, uh, um, that's, I think, the first Michael Jackson album that I ever heard. Um, Thriller, Off the Wall, 1979, Thriller, 1982, and Bad, 1987. In 1985, Jones produced and conducted the charity song We Are the World, which raised funds for victims of the fam famine in Ethiopia. I remember doing that video. If you, if you guys want to watch it, we did a reaction. Alexa and I, we watched the documentary and then we did a reaction to the to the finished project uh, because you never hear the finished project in the documentary. You just see all the people that worked um, on this song. And I love that Quincy Jones told everybody, leave your ego at the door. It's amazing that he got these people together and they they were able to drop you know their ego for these i don't know six seven eight nine hours they were together recording this song it was just a legendary if you haven't seen it watch it it's on netflix um but yeah now off the wall thriller bad what can i say these michael jackson albums are just still to this day legendary the music in them it's not just like Michael doing what he does so well, you know, his singing and uh, just the way he, I don't know, the way he pronounces certain words. And of course, seeing him live is something different, which we will do in this video. Um, but it's also the music that, you know, uh, Quincy Jones brought to the table, his use of of orchestra, orchestration, strings, um, and, and horn instruments in the music, in that pop, in that really funky, poppy um, way. I think Michael Jackson really, you know, benefited of that sound, especially in the 70s and 80s. I just, he knew what to, you know, to to in, in inject into Michael's music, and it worked, you know. Um, not that the first four albums are not good. I'm sure they're good. I haven't really listened to them. I've kind of, like, skimmed through them. But, I mean, you hear the difference you know, um, in the music. So, uh, so first of all, now going back a little bit, we're going to do, um, uh, I think we're going to do, um, Scott's request first, because we're going to focus on the jazz element here of Quincy Jones. He was such an important, um, person in the jazz world. So I want to talk about, and we're going to also, this was very nice. Scott sent me, um, this information, um, Give me a second. I also wanted to read this really quickly because this is really um, um, important information. Jones became the first African-American to be the musical director and conductor of the Academy Awards in 1971. He was the first African-American to receive the Academy's John Herschelt Humanitarian Award in 1995. And he's tied with sound designer Willie D. Burton as the second most Oscar-nominated African-American with seven nominations each, Jones was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame um, 
uh, let's see here in in I'm sorry in 2013 he was named one of the most influential jazz musicians of the 20th century by Time magazine that is just you know that's just a little little bit of information I mean if you go on Wikipedia there is so much information everybody wanted to work with him everybody wanted to record with him because I mean he is, you know, he was the legend already way, way before Michael Jackson, you know. So here, I wanted to read this. Um, so Scott sent me two emails and I wanted to um, read this real quick for you guys. So it says here, good morning, Nick. As you know, Quincy Jones passed yesterday. I will try to link an uh, obituary um, as the song to as to the song requesters. A lot of great choices. Now, he gave me two. I'm going to go here with Birdland and a little tiny um, dialogue that is really, really fun. Um, uh, I It says here, a lot of jazz cameos. This is a little rap dialogue and recording of famous jazz musicians, past and present, that act like a prelude to Birdland and amplifies Quincy's ability to bridge musical styles. So I can't wait because... I already looked and we have we have uh, Sarah Vaughn, we have Ella Fitzgerald, we have Miles Davies, uh, we have, um, I think there was something else. I looked at the list of the song and it was just, it blew my mind. Um, uh, we have some amazing musicians just on the record itself, pure legends, but on the song here, we, I'm going to call them out. And uh, uh, so um, we're going to listen to that first. Because we first wanted, to, I first wanted to, you know, um, put the attention on the jazz, you know, on the jazz of um, of Quincy Jones. So uh, this is another. Now he sent me the. Uh, uh, um, let's see here. Um, where is it? The second email. All right. Okay, and then thank you again, Scott, because you sent me you were like a quick update <laughs> because we're gonna we were gonna do Killer Joe, but since I decided to do Birdland, um, that email is is not important. But uh, I wanted to read the other email that you sent me. Let's say here it is. Okay, so it says here Quincy Jones played the trumpet in the 1950s. Imagine that 70 years ago with Lionel Hampton and Ray Charles and with Dizzy Gillespie on a State Department sponsored tour of South America and the Middle East in 1956. Jones recorded his first album as a band leader, band leader shortly after returning from the tour. However, he, w he hasn't been able to play the trumpet since 1974, when he suffered a pair of aneurysms that almost killed him. That's crazy. It's 1974. That's 50 years ago. Jones is better known for his work as a composer, arranger, producer, and media mogul. He arranged and produced re and recorded for many artists, including Frank Sinatra, Aretha Franklin, Ray Charles, and James Ingram. He also produced the Michael Jackson hit Thriller. And Thriller to this day, I think, is still one of the best-selling albums of all time. So, I mean, the man is just a legend. Um, he did amazing things. And uh, let's go. We're going to listen to here now the first little track here which is called Jazz Corner of the Word. This is from the album Back on the Block, and this is a little prelude in 1989 featuring ja jazz legends such as Sarah Vaughn, Ella Fitzgerald. Now, on the album, we have Al Jarreau, ba Bobby McFerrin. I mean, the list goes on. There's so many um, important, na important names on this um on this album but we're gonna do these two tracks real quick one really short prelude and then we're gonna go into birdland it basically bleeds into so it's it's one song it's just divided that way but um uh, i'll pull up here the list of of the uh musicians involved on this track and uh and then we're gonna react to that let's see so 1989 there are so many albums that is literally impossible to find like I have to go to a different Wikipedia page just to find the album because this man just did so much work. So track number eight is the one we're going to do um, here. 
And uh, here are the also the musicians involved. Wow, the list is just insane. The personnel on this on this album, I mean, features um, the guitar player of Toto, Steve. Um, we got just names: um, Rose Stone, Alfie Silas, you know, um, Tammy Gibson. Uh, I mean, the list is just George Duke, which is an amazing musician. Not on this track will do. Miles Davis is on this track. Uh, Ray Charles is not on this track, but is on the album. It's just everybody wanted to work. Oh, George Benson is the, the person that's going to play the guitar. So let's listen to this first uh, jazz corner of the word, and it's going to bleed into Birdland. So here we go. 1989, Quincy Jones. Let's remember it. Let's remember him. Let's you know, celebrate him through these tracks. And here we go with the first reaction. Thank you so much um, for this, Scott Anderson. And then we'll go, we'll get to JK's reaction as well. So here we go. Because I've been in New York all the time. And he brought Charlie Parker in this hotel room in the Book of Rocks into an hotel. There was nothing to do but play, you know, and we had a lot of fun trying to play. Right after that, man, Charlie Parker was mine. That was the first time I ever had the pleasure to meet Dizzy Gillespie. And then remember Miles. Miles was in my original band. And Charlie Parker created the style. And the moment I heard him, I said, that's how music should sound. <laughs> A tribute to the bird man, the father of bird land, a masterpiece, a release, the horns, words, and the musical great salute the late. Mentor, inventor of a sound that dates back. I think that's with the ice pop, tea. Pop to hip hop, refuse the times of jazz and rhymes and got Kumo D and Big Daddy Kane to bring on the legends. Kane hit the name. I kick a rap too, which you can relax to. A jazz soloist play away with the sax to get the job done. The next one up to do his duty. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. James Moody. No one goes the mile like Miles Davis. Watch how we play this trumpet and pump it just like a mechanic handles a tool. Here's the rebirth of the cool. Miles. Wow. What kind of noise can a string bring making you swing and sing things of a musical fling? Well, listen to this star. Next up is uh, oh, George Benson bringing a guitar. Voice of choice, used wow. just like an instrument. So magnificent, I'm proud to present Devon Sassio, a.k.a. Sarah Vaughn. Honey, you're on. I'm introducing a Bach Revolution. I remember the first time my dad played me Sarah Vaughn. I was just mesmerized. I was like, who is this? And I, he, my dad is a huge fan of Ella Fitzgerald. And... Um, and I was like, is this Ella Fitzgerald? Because that's all I knew. And she's like, no, this is Sarah Vaughn. She's obviously a lot deeper, you know. It's a different style. Um, it's later on, I think. Um, but wow, what a way to incorporate these trumpet solos. The way they incorporated Miles here. That delay that he always uses in these huge halls. Well, I don't know, like some kind of reverb. You know it's Miles Davis. I'm a huge fan of Miles Davis. Um, just... Uh, I don't know. I haven't really done a lot of reactions on the channel because most of the stuff I do know. Um, and then George Benson, that that tone. I love how they present him with the rap, you know. And uh, what a great idea. It's a really, really cool track. So let's see how it bleeds into Birdland. I'm introducing a Bach revolution in jazz that has pizzazz. Here's one player using it. Ask who is he? First name Dizzy. Last name Gillespie. Now watch him get busy. <laughs> Gillespie. Allow me to tell a story about Ella Fitzgerald. Peace out can never be sterile. A woman with flexibility of range. Make it octaves change. Go ahead and do your thing. This is a wow. shout out to one more man, <laughs> Joe Zawano, the writer of Birdland. <laughs> In the 50s, this was the place to be From the band down to the maitre d' Now who could forget the MC on the set The ambulant voice of Pee Wee Marquette Ladies and gentlemen As you know, we have something special Down here at Bird Island this evening A sound so profound has come back around 56th Street is now world-renowned With horn licks to kick and swift wrists to stick Today we bop makes the hip-hop pit These musical geniuses 
goals are so clever, they change the face of music forever. And if you can't understand, here's a past and present Birdland. these legends. So 80s, I love it.
Yes. Oh my lord. This was amazing. I mean, to have Miles, George Benson, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughn on the same track. The only one that I wasn't so familiar with uh, that I loved right now uh, was uh, right here. Uh, do, 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 do. Dizzy. Uh, the trumpet solo. Dilly, uh, Dizzy Gil. Gillespie, I think Gillespie is the right one, but I, I love the rap. Now I I think I let's see is that um was that Ice T because I used to listen as a child. I did listen to rap. Yes, Ice T. Yes, yes. Um, I I used to listen to rap because my brother listened to rap. He was a little bit old. He's four years older, so he was you know into different music. Uh, it didn't last very long, uh, the, the, the whole rap phase, because I was always into classical music um, so much. And then rock came into my life and, and then jazz and and now it's mostly jazz. But also the channel, you know, has changed my life so much. I mean, the list on this uh, album is ridiculous. Everybody wanted to work with Quincy Jones. Everybody wanted to at least say, yeah, I've worked with Quincy Jones, because that already puts you in a different tier of musician you know um i'm surprised that you know uh dion warwick is on here uh yeah i'm surprised you know because i donald fagan for me and walter becker are such icons but maybe you know um maybe al Jarreau. um yeah you know uh Maybe they were busy, <laughs> you know, um, uh, because Donald Fagan at 1989 was already, they were already separated. They were not even Steely Dan anymore. They were doing their own thing. But well, back to Quincy Jones. What a track. What a cool intro, the prelude. Um, I know there's a lot of people who don't like rap. I think it's a cultural thing, you know, if you can if you can get past all the 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 rap nowadays, especially the rap is so bad. It's so um it's not very musical at all. Now, I can say that rap, it, you know, rap is more an art form of, you know, um, it's like, you know, between poetry and creating the rhymes and all that stuff. I know musically it's not very, it's not like progressive rock or classical music or jazz, but it's part of the the culture, you know. So I, I, I just love it for what it is, the art form of rap. Um, and it's very influential. Um yeah, so this was a very nice intro. Then going into Birdland with a track, what a beautiful instrumental track with some very nice improvised solos by Sarah Vaughn. You know, you know, Ella Fitzgerald, beautiful guitar work here. George Benson, Miles Davis. I mean, what is there to say? There is not, you can't say enough about Miles. And also, um, the other dizzy beautiful beautiful i i think he doesn't play um i mean it looks like it's a trumpet but on the picture it's something uh, else now um this is the reaction um that scott wanted me to do now we're gonna jump into michael jackson but i'm gonna read something first here jk um it says a little bit it says here, Nick, Quincy Jones died yesterday, November 3rd, at the age of 91. Hard to pick from all of his amazing work. But I'm going with this impeccable production on Billie Jean, Michael Jackson's iconic song from the blockbuster album Thriller 1983. Um, yes. And now there's a second email but I, because I think you sent me the video of of him, uh, just the video, you know, the MTV hit. And then you did send me the um, the actual concert. And I'm so happy because when I saw this, I was like, wow, this is going to be amazing. Um, because I haven't really seen Michael Jackson that often. I've seen him in some clips, but I've never really seen him live. And this is like in his prime. This is when he was, you know, in his 20s and just at the height of his career. And I see it already in the picture, the the way he is dressed that's the i think i think i think this is the michael jackson that just was the the king of pop so it says here this is like error this is the right billy jean video it says hi nick i made my quincy jones tribute request last night but i got it wrong now um this is he actually introduced 
it live in this video the moonwalk the iconic moment for for the motown uh now if i'm too late to make this correction no big deal <laughs> you guys are the sweetest but i'm no you're not um i'm gonna do this so they're both quincy jones original arrangements for billy jean so here we're gonna hear how basically i mean michael jackson was an icon he did jackson five he did all this work he did four albums but then when he got together with, with quincy jones it just they created magic together and that's what we're gonna see and i i can't wait to see michael dancing now let's see if i can do this in one take without breaking uh the immersion here let's see let me just uh, move my screen over here um and let's find the video of michael um if it's loaded up let's see it looks like it's not but hey no biggie we can still do this um let's click on jk's email all right um give me a second here all right so aha uh -huh. you know what there is a remastered version of the video that you sent me. Why don't we watch the remastered? I mean, it's going to sound better. It's going to look better. Let's do that. Let's do that. Um, let's see. Okay, let's pause. Let's not reveal anything. Let's put the volume up. Okay, let's see if this works. Let's. Okay, Michael Jackson, Billie Jean, Motown 25 performance remastered. I hope you're fine with this. I hope I'm, I'm, it's the same video. It's just, you know, the quality is better. I'm sure it's going to be a bit louder. All right. So this is now I've seen the moonwalk, of course, but I just want to see how he sets it up, how he this is the first time he's doing it. That's alone. That is, you know, worth the reaction, I think. OK, so let's put it up. See if I can do this. All right. So I did have to cut away for a second. But here we are. Here we have it. Everybody enjoy this amazing piece of music, you know, that uh, Michael Jackson and Quincy Jones wrote together. And it's still as fresh as the freshest bread you can eat. So here we go. It's just incredible. I have to pause for a second only. I mean, look at this man. The way, even the pants, the way that they're a little bit shorter just makes him look so perfect. You know, the shoes, the pants, they're a little bit shorter. It makes him look just the, the way he moves is so elegant. It's calculated. I love the glitter. I love the glove, the hair. It's just amazing to look at this man. It's it's magic. It's literally magic. Like something about him, the way he portrays, the way he carries him. It's all this work. Do you see all this work put into this one performance? And it's perfect. And I want to see that moonwalk. I mean, it's just wonderful. It's wonderful.
an iconic performance what a what a musician um what a what an artist you know michael jackson uh i've always loved him i never believed any of the bs um you know uh, this is just amazing this 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 artist is just such a like there's nothing like it i think the only one that is on the same level as Michael Jackson was Prince and they're both gone and I can't believe it. I can't believe that I'm saying this, um, that they're both no longer with us born. I mean, you know, they died so early and they did so much. And I think I don't, I'm not comparing Michael Jackson with Prince, but I think they're both so original. I just wanted to mention Prince and I know there is a lot of comparison uh, between them when they're completely different musical styles and Prince is more, you know, uh, I think he's not so, so pop. He does pop, but he does a lot more rock and funk. And but uh, so I like I said, I don't want, I don't want to compare. It. I think they're equally as amazing and they're ge genius level artists, you know, Prince and Michael Jackson. And I don't want to compare them. They're just too different. Um, but here, Michael Jackson is where he found, I think, something that he hasn't he hadn't done before with this. I mean, even with Off the Wall, I think you already had the the strings you had the jazz you had the funk you know i mean it's so funky and it hasn't aged at all it doesn't feel like um like there's some music that you listen to and it's very nostalgic 80s music but sometimes it does sound a little bit dated because of the instruments that are being used and it just maybe it doesn't sound dated because maybe you like you know you like when you hear that kind of music but it just sounds so of that era this on the other hand sounds timeless it sounds like they could have recorded this yesterday it's just you know even though uh, unfortunately they do not record stuff like that anymore for radio you know i think uh, is a hit is something that you will hear all the time on the radio we don't hear those we we only hear this kind of music when we hear classic rock or classic radio you know unfortunately but well you know there is some amazing music being made nowadays it's a little bit harder to find it's more underground it's more indie you know the big artists unfortunately pay, play all the the same stuff and you know that's just the world we live in nowadays but man this was an amazing iconic performance the way he set up that moonwalk and also on the stage it was a smaller stage there was a, really an, a lot of room to do this you know but the way he everything is so calculated and so clean and so i mean i know that 
Michael Jackson was a perfectionist and he put in the hours, he put in the work and everything was flawless. And I saw, I had one DVD of the show he was going to do before he passed away that this is it show. Um, and I mean, there were just rehearsals upon rehearsals upon rehearsals, like just all day. And that's how you do it. You know, that's how as a musician, you become iconic. And then when people see you, they're like, wow, you know, because that's that's the way it is but there it is quincy jones thank you again so much jk for this um request i love both requests here i was like when i got the request i literally got them at the same time almost because i remember that i was still up yesterday and then suddenly i i went on my phone to check check one last thing and it said literally like uh breaking news like quincy jones just passed away so immediately after that i think an hour or two hours later um in the morning uh, i saw um that jk and scott had sent me a request to do a reaction video and i thought oh man how am i gonna do this and uh what am I going to do? Like maybe one video could be a tribute and the other one could be like, I don't know, like rest in peace. I was like, why don't I just do it together? I, I think they, they wouldn't mind. I mean, it's for both of you. I wanted to thank you again for sponsoring this video without you guys. I, I mean, I, I sometimes I do tributes. You know, I did one for a Pauliano of Iron Maiden. Uh, nobody asked for that one, but people loved it, you know. And But this is a big one. This is a, a musician. This is a genius level musician that everybody knew. Um, I saw Rick Beato already released his tribute video. I'm sure he broke down something amazing. He's such a master. I really look up to him. And also the titles. He's the he creates the titles you have to click on it it's like you know the clickbait master not i don't want to uh say that's a negative thing i think it's an art form as well you know to get people interested in something um as long as you deliver you know you have to uh, you can't just say something in the title and then show something of Lee live and that that is too much but i mean maybe you know make it interesting like i want to click on something that sounds interesting so you know again uh, thank you so so much j jk scott thank you for this amazing request i hope you enjoyed everyone if you uh see this for the first time if this is your first uh you know video that you see of either myself or alexia or us together um please if you like it leave a comment like the video subscribe to the channel sometimes the button is white sometimes the button is black um depending on what setting you have on your google account um it used to be red the subscribe button um please do subscribe there's a lot of people that watch the channel they don't even know how to subscribe it's free of charge of course there's no cost as long as you have a google account i think that's it and that's free um it does help a lot because our videos like of all the millions of views this channel has gotten only 20 percent of those viewers are subscribed so please do us a favor and subscribe so we know the numbers we know what you know uh, the real you know amount of people that watch the channel so um it really helps us a lot and i really really uh, would be very very thankful if you subscribe of course um again this was such fun i mean Birdland and the the song before that little prelude jazz corner of the word amazing stuff 1989 and then we have this amazing Michael Jackson performance of the mid 80s what a time to be alive like I mean these people are so lucky even the people in the back with the orchestra they were like you know they were like digging it it must have been fantastic to see to witness this you know in real time and in real life uh instead of on video and on youtube so you know uh one can only dream that's just one thing that i wish i would have seen you know he passed away so young at the age of 50 um it's just so sad and also you know uh people like prince david bowie there's so many icons that i've wished i could have seen but you know it's just it is what it is again thank you so much everybody for watching i appreciate it very very much let's celebrate quincy jones with this video thank you so much if you have any tale of quincy jones or an experience that you want to share put it in the comment section let's talk about it thank you so much and i'll see you all in the next one